The duck is just different. Again, bony structure. Here we have some of the giblets as a part of it. So we see the leg, the gizzard, the heart, some liver. Again, if you weren't going to use these for anything, the necks are good for stock, but we could use this in our pan. You know, uh, pretty much everything here could be used for stock or cooked. You know, these, uh, the gizzards, which is what you have here, you know, a little bit of connective tissue to trim up there, but those could be slow cooked. The heart, same thing, could be slow cooked. The liver, you wouldn't want to make a part of a stock or a broth because it's going to cloud it. You know, but for the duck, same kind of thing. We're going to take three lengths of the duck with their butcher's twine. So we're going to find the muscle man, and the duck's going to look a little bit different in terms of muscle man. Midpoint of our string. All right, so you guys are walk me through this one. What are we going to do? All right, so we're going to tie onto the neck. Yep, this is going to be an anchor point. And again, trussing, the goal's the same. Couple different methods. Here, I got a towel. Couple different methods can be used for that. So this is our anchor point. We're going to flip it back over. OK, so we're going to tuck the wings back. And again, kind of like think about putting your fist behind your head. We're just going to pull them back, tuck them under. And you can really look at these, these wings a whole lot bonier than that chicken wing. Yeah, there's some excess fat. If we're doing a roasted duck, we might want to tuck up this uh, extra skin underneath, or you can even trim some of it off. But for our trussing purposes, you know, there's a lot of extra fat up here. You could also take some shears trim this up to remove some of the extra fat. But we're going to pull this along the side just like we did with the, the chicken, right in front, cross it over here. Pull it tight so that pulls those thighs back, come up, cross over on the legs, you know, a little safety knot just like we did with the chicken. Same thing. You shouldn't be able to really wiggle those away. You know, if this was looser, you would be able to move it uh, by wiggling the legs. But kind of tight. Again, the wing's tucked under. The string is on top of the wing, coming along the side into the side here. All right, so we're going to cover that as a part of the Simon Says. Let's go to a little bit of fabrication. We're going to cover two techniques. One is for that eight cut chicken. And then the second technique we're going to cover as a part of making the supreme. Uh, and also doing that deboned uh, leg and thigh quarter. So for doing an eight cut, what we really want to do is remove the backbone. So you could grab a hold of the tail, and you could just kind of like mark yourself a little guideline of where we're cutting to remove that. But you're just going to kind of stand it up, hold the tail, cut right down through one side. If you find that you're having a hard time cutting, you need to move more into the center. What's happening is you're running into that thigh bone. So we're going to take the other side, same thing, kind of pull up on it as I'm cutting. So we can remove that backbone that could be used for stock. Yeah, again, if we're doing a roasted product, we can save that and use that uh, there. So here we have you know, uh, the keel bone. And we're just going to pop the knife right into the cartilage part of the keel bone. And you can kind of peel it back and start to run your finger or your thumb along that. And we have a, a little bit of frozen chicken here on the inside. But usually we can uh, get that freed up pretty easily, kind of peel it out in one piece with the cartilage and everything. A little bit of a fight here. So just taking my fingers, run it on either side of that keel bone so we can ideally peel it out. So we've removed the, the backbone, the keel bone. Now we want to cut through the wishbone and just right up. So we have two chicken halves. So if we're doing a little roasted or grilled chicken half, taking out that additional portion of the backbone means that this is going to have more uniform shape between the two pieces, roast a little bit more evenly. You can even truss a half where you take a little piece of that flap of skin, make a pocket for it, take the end of your drumstick, run it through that hole, and as it cooks, that'll help kind of hold it in. You could even cut off the wingtip. This will have a tendency to burn, yeah, but you could even kind of tuck that under a little bit. But if we're doing like a little roasted or broiled half a chicken, that works out really nice for the presentation. But taking this into a six cut or an eight cut, real easy. You know, and, uh, very easy to do. We've taken most of the bones out, so if I kind of pull the leg thigh quarter up, I can almost kind of separate that with my hand just where the skin is there. And so to cut this into quarters, 
just that simple cut right there. So now we have leg thigh quarter, breast quarter with the wing on it. Yeah, with our other one, same thing. Just cut right through. And then if we're gonna separate this out even further for eight cut chicken, like for grilled chicken, broiled chicken, or fried chicken, uh, we do wanna trim up a little bit of this extra fat on the thigh. But if we get this all separated out, we see a, there's this little fat seam right here on the leg thigh that separates it. And you don't want to cut right through it. You want to cut right to the leg side of that line, and that'll line it up where you'll always cut right through that cartilage. If you cut on that line, you usually get a little bit into the bone a little bit. Or, that was a little bit redundant. You get into the bone a little bit too far, and it's hard to cut. So here, you see the seam. Where do I cut? Like to the leg side. So we want to just cut to the leg side of that. That takes us right through that cartilage. Real easy. We could trim up some of this extra fat here. So if we're doing a little bit of grilled chicken, you know, you won't have all that extra fat kind of dripping onto the grill. For the breast meat, if we're looking to take off the wing, I like to hold the wing itself, you know, kind of like you're shaking its hand, and then I can roll and manipulate that joint just like what we did with the lamb yesterday, and you can start to cut around it, expose that joint. You know, unless you're Todd's famous hot wings, uh, you, you probably want to take off and, and leave most of that meat on the breast as opposed to the little drumette. You know, but that's it. You know, this is your, you know, eight cut chicken that you would use for fried chicken. You know, sometimes you could even cut the breast in half. You know, breasts are certainly one of the most popular pieces. Let's uh, go ahead and talk about fabrication like we're going to do with the Simon Says. Our goal is to take a supreme breast. And that means that we're taking it mostly boneless with the exception of leaving that drumette, that one first bone on the wing on there. And we typically use that as a portion of the plate. The bone will help prevent shrinkage a little bit, but we use that as kind of a presentation point. So I'm just gonna go and take this one that we trussed up. So, uh, and well, actually I need my bony knife. So, and what you guys are gonna do today, and what you would do for your practicals, first thing, truss it up. Be like, chef, done. Look at it, nice compact truss. Then we're gonna go ahead and fabricate this into our supreme breast and ultimately take the leg thigh quarter off debone it and take the skin off. So we're just going to go ahead and cut the string off. For our preparations here, same thing as what we talked about with the turkey, we're just going to start right on top of the keel bone. You can feel for it, just put your knife right on top of the keel bone and the knife will fall naturally to one side or the other. So once you get through that, just a nice slicing stroke, pulling the meat away from the bones as we're cutting it. Not a lot of pressure, but a little bit of pressure on the bone so that we're cutting the meat away and leaving the bone there. So you can work both directions, just rolling your way around the, the breast itself. You know, again, a couple other methods could be employed here. There's even a way of kind of like scraping and milking out the wishbone to get a little bit more yield there. But when we come down to the wing, we're wanting to keep that on the breast. And so when we get down to that joint, what I do is I pull the wing out, and that helps line up the cartilage where you could just come down to that joint, cut right through it. And for our purposes today, because we're going to be stuffing this chicken breast, we want to cut off extra skin with the breast meat. So that's one of the chicken breasts done, and we need to come back and clean that up. But I'll turn it the other way, same thing. I can see where my keel bone is, so I'm just going to take my knife, nice long slicing strokes following the curvature of the rib cage. all the way till we get to that point where the wing is. And you can see that that joint, you can start to manipulate it a little bit. This is the joint here, and this is the socket. But just pulling that out, again, kind of lines up the cartilage where you could just cut right through that joint, typically. Come right. Yeah, if you cut too close to it, what's going to happen, you'll have like the dangling uh, drumette, you know, where it, it'll kind of not really be connected. But we're going to put that to the side right now. So now we're left with our leg thigh quarters, and this is a little bit different. We're gonna turn it over to the back. I'm not putting down my knife, but I'm holding my hand on the backbone and starting to peel this out. This is a ball and socket joint. If you don't hold here, what's gonna happen is sometimes you break the backbone uh, and not peel it out. So if I just pull it back, you can see that little ball and socket joint, or you know, the ball portion of that revealed from the thigh. Same thing on the other side, just holding in the backbone, peeling the other side back, revealing that ball and socket joint right where the thigh connects, that's commonly called the oyster. That's a prized piece of meat. And in a chicken, it's a real small piece of meat. In a turkey, that's like three or four ounces. 
And so your goal is to get that out. A couple different ways of doing that. You know, one, you can cut this direction and you can kind of peel it out. I prefer to cut from that uh, oyster, just cut right into the backbone, kind of turn your knife like you're scooping out a scoop of ice cream. So cut into the backbone, kind of scoop around that little, uh, little joint. And then now I can put a lot of pressure on the carcass to cut the rest of the meat away from uh, the, the well, I got a little bit more bone there. Cut the rest of the meat off of the backbone. Same thing on this side, right into the backbone, kind of scoop it around, and then follow the backbone to cut the leg thigh off. So here we have our, our back and our carcass. So one of the ways we can look to see how well we did is to come back and try to scrape some meat off. And that's one thing I use to evaluate how well students have done this. Come back, see if I can scrape any more than what I say like a golf ball size of meat off of it. You know, and if you, you can, that means you've left, left a lot of that breast meat on here. You just end up with a, a very little amount here that is wasted from that. So that could go to the side. Let's finish our supreme breast. So here we have uh, the breast meat, a little bit of cartilage here. We always want to do a little once over. Uh, that's going to be a real common problem with the duck is having a lot of cartilage here. We're going to separate out the breast at the, or the wing at the first drumette. So just cut right through the cartilage there. We want to go ahead and take the little drumette, score around it. to remove any of the tendons that are there. And then, just like we did yesterday, we can use the back of the knife to scrape that towards the end, just in helping to clean up or French out that bone. So we could take a little hacksaw or bone saw to trim this up. I like to use the heel of my knife. The key thing is you want to cut, try to cut more through the cartilage. And when you cut this, you don't want to use your French knife like a cleaver. You want to hit it through. So just line it up, hit it through the cartilage. We can come back and trim this up a little bit more. If you really use kind of the cleaver motion with it, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a lot of bone fragment uh, in there. And, and nobody wants to bite into a piece of bone. So that's just one Frenched up breast. We'll do the other one here. So what do I got to do? All right, so I see this little V here, and we're leaving the first bone. There's three bones here. We're going to leave the first bone on the breast. So I'm just going to kind of line up with that V and cut right through, and hopefully that follows us where we get right through the cartilage. What am I looking for here? All right, trim up any extra fat or cartilage. So here I got a little, I can see a little bit of this white portion of the keel bone. Now what? All right, so we're going to score around the drumette. And I'm just making sure I'm trying to cut all those tendons loose. And you can start to pull it loose, but use the back of your knife to scrape it. Why are you not using the front of your knife? Yeah, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it'll dull your knife. The real purpose is if you've got a sharp knife, you'll cut right into that bone. You know, no need for that. So line up right onto the, the knuckle portion of this. Just hit it through with the palm of your hand. Yeah, we could come back and still trim up a little bit more of this connective tissue there. But end up with a little French drumette there. That could go for stock.